2023 has been a year with some pretty solid video game adaptations. I guess the streak had to end somewhere. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Josh. Today we're talking about Five Nights at Freddy's. This is a PG-13 horror film that is an adaptation of the very popular point and click horror game series. This is directed by Emma Tammy. I have seen one of her previous horror films. I think it was called The Wind or something like that. Wasn't a huge fan of it. But this is an IP that I was interested in. Scott Cawthon, who made the games, was a writer on board this film, which had me intrigued. I just want to take a second to acknowledge how crazy it is that this guy made such a simple, standard, two-dimensional game where you, you can't even get up and move in it. You're sitting, you're looking at security cameras, you're making sure these animatronics aren't coming to kill you. To the best of my knowledge, Cawthon did not have much faith in the game being very successful, and it blew up into this massive IP. It's a pretty cool story. I personally have played through pretty much all of the games and I enjoy all of them. I know they're a little too simplistic for some people, but they have great atmosphere and all of the games out there that focus largely on jump scares, I think the jump scares in these games are pretty effective. And this movie adapts the game's story pretty faithfully. We follow a security guard, Mike, played by Josh Hutcherson, who is hired to work the graveyard shift at this abandoned pizzeria that just happens to be home to an array of animatronics that seem to have minds of their own. Meanwhile, he's also dealing with a custody battle over his young sister and some childhood trauma involving his brother who went missing when he was a kid. Yeah, I may have said that this adapts the material pretty accurately, but it does have a lot of extra baggage on it. As far as what I was expecting going into this, I just wanted a fun, goofy, gateway horror film, something along the lines of scary stories to tell in the dark, you know, something that, that feels like it was made well for its target audience. I think an R-rated Five Nights at Freddy's movie could be really cool based on how dark the lore is behind the games, but I understand why they wanted to make it PG-13 because, admittedly, a large portion of their target audience are teenagers. The problem is that this really feels like two distinctly different movies at war for screen time. On one hand, we have this super dark backstory for Mike that delves into childhood trauma, dreams, and memories. Some interesting stuff in there, but it doesn't feel like it belongs in this movie. It feels like it would be better suited for an R-rated version. And on the other hand, there will be a scene where Mike's sister is dancing with the animatronics, building forts with them. <laughs> that scene actually kind of pissed me off. It's too silly and it removes any scare factor that these animatronics have surrounding them whatsoever. Much like the games, the scares in this largely rely on jump scares, but I don't think the jump scares are that effective. And most importantly, I think this fails to recognize what made the games so scary. What was scary about looking at the security cameras in the original Five Nights at Freddy's is that the animatronics don't move when you're looking at them. And then if you look away in a different camera for a few seconds, it might disappear and you know they're making their way closer to the security office. That's what made it scary. Also, they were clearly very conservative with the amount of material that they adapted, and I kind of wish they just pulled from all of the games because quite frankly the marionette character from the second game is way scarier than any of the characters in this one. They should have just gone all in and included him too. As far as things that I do like go, uh, the animatronics look fantastic. They were built by Jim Henson's company and you can really tell. I still think they were poorly utilized but they look immaculate. The set design is jaw-droppingly accurate to the game and I appreciate that. I mean it's nice to see an adaptation that actually respects its source material and tries to encapsulate it as best as it can. Also I like Josh Hutcherson. He's a pretty solid lead even though a good 90% of the dialogue in this entire film is atrocious. Matthew Lillard makes the best of his about five minutes of screen time. I mean seriously imagine wasting this guy in your movie. There is one plot point from the games that they adapt towards the end that I do think was very effective, super fan servicey, but I'm a fan, so service me. Give, me. give me some good stuff from the games, and I feel like that was one of the few things that did stick the landing in the end. I wanted to like Elizabeth Lale's character, but she felt the most thrown in out of any of them. I don't remember her being a part of the games whatsoever. I, I don't really know how to explain what went wrong here, because again, they, they stick to the accuracy of the source material well, but as a fan, I was so disappointed. In the end, Five Nights at Freddy's is a big waste of time. It's bafflingly unsure of what it wants to be, almost completely inept when it comes to scares and tension, and there are very few scenes in which people are just in this restaurant trying to get away from the animatronics, which is the premise of the original game. So why did they have to add all of this stuff? 
this extra baggage that doesn't feel like it belongs on top of the lore that we know. And the dialogue, my god, the dialogue is so terrible. It, it, a lot of the characters talk like they walked right off of Sesame Street. So in the end, we've got two stories clashing with each other for screen time, two tones that don't fit together whatsoever. It's not silly enough to nail that fun camp atmosphere, and it's certainly not scary enough to be a good edge of your seat thriller. It hurts me to do this, but I'm gonna give Five Nights at Freddy's two out of five stars. I wouldn't recommend rushing out to the theater to check this out. Honestly, at the very least, you could wait until it's on Peacock to stream it. Even then, I think it's a waste of time. You're much better off playing the games or even just watching gameplay videos and learning about the lore, which is so much more subtle and interesting than the crap that this movie tries to pile on. I can't hate this because there really was an effort put into it to develop characters that have complex histories and not just a jump scare fest, but there's trying to do something different and then there's sticking the landing with it and that's where this falls completely short. I'm turning it to you guys now. I, I'm really curious to know what the public reception of this is going to be because I feel like people who haven't played the games are gonna be totally lost and confused as to what the draw is to this. So if you haven't played the games and you watched the movie, what did you think of it? Were you able to understand what was going on? The auditorium that I was in was definitely filled with fans because they were calling out every time there was something that they recognized, uh, an Easter egg, so to speak. And I feel like if I hadn't played the games and I was watching this, I would have been even more annoyed. Regardless, that's going to be it for this video. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and I'll see you guys in the next one.